Hello, everyone. Um, this morning, we've seen all the great science, really detailed science that's been underway for the last decade to tell us where we are and what happens when we change things. In the afternoon, we're going to hear about the things that farmers are doing and can do to reduce emissions, increase sequestration. What I'm going to spend 10 minutes saying is that all this is worthless unless we can prove it's being done. And this is what measurement reporting verification, or MRV, is all about. And it's simple. Measurement is just about what's the size of the impact, positive or negative, on emissions or sequestration. Reporting, where did it happen and when did it happen? And verification, this is the key bit. Can we prove it happened? Can we prove that what we're saying is occurring did occur? It's only then will we get paid. And there's two approaches. We saw a lot this morning, Christian, uh, about carbon farming. And this is like results-based. This is where you say you're going to achieve a certain target. And to do that, you need to get a baseline and then come back 5, 10, 15 years later and measure again and prove that you've achieved so much tonnage per hectare or whatever in carbon. And this is typical of the carbon credits approach. On a national basis, and this is more in line with some of the issues in the MAC uh, curve that uh, Jin Lan was just talking about, is where we, we know there are actions that will increase sequestration or decrease emissions and farmers then are supported to adopt these actions. And the MRV just tells us whether, on a national scale, these actions are being adopted. So measuring, we've seen a lot this morning about the huge investment in infrastructure uh, to measure at specific sites what's going on in the ground and in the air. As well as the towers, we have lots of other instrumentation scattered around the country, uh, soil probes, soil moisture, temperature, weather stations, all this feeds in. And in the Train AI project, we built a sort of platform where all this data could be pulled together so the modelers could do their modeling. I'm just going to emphasize something that Julia and Rachel were saying earlier. This is some of the survey work that was done around the towers in the Train AI project. And those little maps are individual fields and footprints of the towers. And their changes in soil organic carbon across even that very small scale. So this is a really variable thing to try and monitor. Uh, and the, it's difficult to model um, unless you have really precise data that you can bring together then into these models. And again, if we want to keep, if we want to know we've improved things, we're going to have to support this infrastructure. It can't just be put in place now and left. We need to pay for its upkeep, for new researchers to keep working on it and to keep, keep it going, because some of these instruments are a bit uh, fragile. When we have the models, when we know really in detail what's going on in specific locations. We need some way of spreading them around the country, of uh, going wider. And this is where the remote sensing piece comes in, and the Earth observation. Uh, we could use uh, aircraft. We've used drones a lot. Uh, we use a lot of satellite data, as well as getting daily observations of the country. We've put a lot of work into building an archive going back uh, to the mid-80s, so we can see changes over time in this uh, space. One of the really uh, clever technologies we're using in the signpost program is LIDAR. Now, LIDAR, I don't know if they have one here, is, is just like this laser pointer, only a bit more complex. And it shines out uh, a laser from the drone, and it just measures how long it takes for the laser to bounce back. And on the bottom there, each of those little black dots is where a laser pulse has bounced off a leaf in a hedgerow. Okay, and that's uh, an individual hedgerow. And this allows us to really accurately measure um, the structure in the farm and the structures. So this is one of our LIDAR surveys. Uh, we can see each of those little dots is an individual uh, laser response. It's been colorized to match the color of the, the landscape. We can zoom in to an individual hedgerow, really see the structure, the density, the volume, and these are the measures we need. There are some emissions. Sometimes the laser can't get through the canopy. So we have this sort of void underneath. And as we pull back, we can see this other 
sort of whole landscape approach. And this is where the LIDAR, again, is useful for things like water quality, because we can map how the water will run across the surface. And we can see the infrastructure of the farm, the buildings, the walls, the roads. But all in all, what it allows us to have is this three-dimensional understanding of each of those signpost farms. And so far, 92 of them have been flown, and the data has all been analysed. And it gives us this complete snapshot of what's going on. Saying all that, really, all the LIDAR does is measure shape. Okay? It doesn't directly measure carbon. To do that, to convert all those measurements from the laser into an estimate of the carbon stock in a hedgerow, we need other equations that convert volume into biomass, then biomass into carbon. And this is the work that was done, finished last year in the Farm Carbon Project, Leland O'Sullivan, uh, that took sample hedgerows and actually measured how much carbon is in each of them. And that gives us the equations that converts those laser points into carbon estimates of carbon stock in hedgerows and trees on the farm. Typically, uh, Lillian found that the mean above ground carbon stock in a hedgerow was 58 tonnes of carbon per hectare. Okay, now that's, fifth, that's a hectare of hedgerow. It's not a hectare of land with a hedgerow around it. Okay? And we've done this in other uh, areas. Uh, John will be uh, very familiar with this. This was the Dowd Estate, it's now a, a public lands, and this was a, an early attempt to use lasers to measure above ground carbon. We do the same for the uh, signpost farms, so each farm gets us a carbon stock estimate, but also we use the laser to improve our uh, biodiversity maps of the farm, because Signpost isn't just about carbon, it's also about biodiversity and water quality, and it allows us to bring all these things together in a single map package. So it gives us a baseline, so we can go back at the end of signpost and say, well, did things change? Did they get better? And again, we can do some reporting um, at a national scale. So now, some of you will be aware, there's now something called the National Land Cover Map from Tulcha Aaron. And this maps each single hedgerow in the country. Uh, we've done some work on it to improve it uh, for the sort of work we need to do, uh, where we can separate the hedgerows between those that are tightly managed and those that are less managed. Uh, and this has important implications for the amount of carbon they hold. Um, for instance, we can see there in Kildare, we can see the amount of um, carbon stored in the irregular hedgerows is bigger than the amount of carbon stored in the regular hedgerows. But we have to be clear that MRV works both ways. It can't just tell a positive story. Uh, and all the studies that have been done in the last 10 years show that we are still having a net removal of hedgerow in terms of area of hedgerow. Uh, and this is important. When it comes to verification, so some of the MAC options we'll see this afternoon, how do people um, how is it possible to show in the national inventory that these things have been adopted? So Chagas has been doing some research on using satellites to look at some of the MAC options to see whether it's possible to verify that they're being adopted. Grassland management is a big issue, so we have systems that measure biomass or grass growth. Uh, we've also uh, systems like this map here, and what this does is it looks at each field in the country and it can tell whether they're being managed as paddocks, and this is an important indicator of intensification uh, on the farm. Uh, and this can be used, this is also being developed now uh, within DAFM uh, as a, a verification tool for payments to show all well, this, if it's in paddocks, it's obviously being farmed so the payment can go ahead. On the other side of that, um, some of the things that uh, Matt was talking about um, and Rachel about ploughing and grassland and land use change is that with the archive of imagery, we can now produce a map of sort of truly permanent grasslands. These are, are grasslands that in the 40 years that we can observe in the satellite, there hasn't been a, a, um, a plowing event or a reseeding event. And these are important in terms of constraining the inventory, the national inventory, um, making it more refined. It's important for the researchers because these are sites where you can go and say, well, actually, so what is the carbon storage? Have they reached? Um, 
saturation. Uh, so it's an important tool for researchers and policymakers. Another important MAC option uh, that was mentioned earlier is winter green cover, um, catch crops. Uh, up till now, it's been very difficult to show whether they've been uh, done um, because it's winter, it's cloudy, uh, and the satellites don't work, but there's no, new satellites from Copernicus that use microwave radars that can see through clouds. So we've, we've published a paper showing that we can use this technology in December to see whether a tillage field is bare or has a catch crop planted. And this again means that when the inventory, national inventory is revised, we can say, well, this is the number of farmers that are adopting this measure, adjust the inventory downwards or appropriately. Um, the other use of the SAR satellite, as it's known, um, again, going back to the hedgerows, is that this technology is now used to detect hedgerow removal. And it can detect hedgerow removal almost as it happens. And lastly, on the verification piece, this is moving into what um, uh, Matt was talking about uh, in terms of manipulating the water table. Again, we want to get a proper baseline, exactly how much land is drained or not drained in these areas. So we have projects using satellites to make these maps of drainage. And then if policy does move towards uh, supporting changes in the water table, we need a technology that can detect that happening and showing that it's being done. So in conclusion, um, MIV is the key for all these carbon farming. Okay? It's the evidence base on which we can support payments or activity in the credit market. Um, Chagas is helping to develop uh, these tools. Um, the MRV technology around hedgerows and some of these land managements is ready to go. Okay, so I think certainly farmers can be confident that if they do follow new guidelines on making hedgerows larger or taller or planting new ones, that they will get credit. It will be seen and, and marked upon. Uh, and lastly, again, all the stuff that goes down to the soil carbon, that's really very difficult to measure. It can't be done remotely. Um, it relies on field measurements uh, and it relies on intensive before and after sampling if we're going to do that. So we need support to do it. Thank you.